Love, this is me, Keisha, and I'm here with this week's All Tea, All Shade, Love and Hip Hop Atlanta Season 5, Episode 11 Recap. I missed you all so much last week. They did not show any new episodes last week. I don't know why. I guess because of the NBA Finals. I don't know. But we're back with the new episode. First off, I want to let you all know that I'll be back next week with Beats of the Weeks. Um, Spill the Tea Bitch will be back next week. I have a full skincare routine uh, video coming next week and new makeup tutorials coming as well. So get ready for those. I'll be back glammed. I'm finishing up my book, wrapping it up. For those of you that are readers of my work, um, Radio Silence will be out in July. So get ready for that. If you are, once again, readers and fans of my work, it is a part of the China Black series. You have to read China Black first, then Emotionally Unavailable, then Heartless, and then Radio Silence. I have been putting my ass, my foot, my back into this book. It is so great. Expect the unexpected. It's so lit. I'm so excited about this book. I've been working tirelessly on it. As you can see, I look a hot, old, raggedy ass mess. I cannot wait to comb my hair and get a line in my nigga. But anywho, I have some behind the scenes here for you all. So, report, it was reported last week that Tommy and the King family have been fired from Love and Hip Hop Atlanta and that Tommy was banned from the reunion. Um, Mona Scott said this wasn't true. Tommy said that it was. We don't know. Uh, Jocelyn also last week went and did a polygraph test to prove that Stevie J enjoys watching gay porn and watching with her. I don't know why she thought we would be shocked by this information. Stevie likes masculine looking women, so why wouldn't he like men? Um, the polygraph test proved that she was telling the truth. Uh, she said she wasn't going to wait to reveal this at the reunion. She wanted to get it all out there now since he want to walk around and say, saying that they're not married. This is a big ass shit show, but I'm here for it. I cannot wait for the reunion. Love and Hip Hop Hollywood is the next franchise up. So I'm excited about that. And we have Miami and Houston coming as well. So yes. Okay, now on to this episode. Episode, I'm going to tell you already off the bat, it was quite boring. I give it a D minus, almost an F. It was boring as fuck. But uh, we started the episode off with Scrap and KK, a.k.a. the Wicked Witch of the South, in court. And Tommy is at home pretending like she cared that he going to jail. Uh, Carly is in the park acting like she lonely and sad and shit. And we both know both these hoes don't give two fucks and they was already riding the next dick. <laughs> at this point so Scrap is in jail he tells the judge he has two young boys which further proves that T that I gave y'all early in the beginning of the year I mean beginning of the season when I showed you the picture of his other baby mama and their young baby boy so if you missed that T go back and watch the uh, earlier ATL reviews um, so the judge gives him five years of a 20 year sentence and he has to pay a hundred thousand dollar fine um yeah it's fucked up he went to jail, but you got to do the crime. If you're going to do the do the time, you're going to do the crime shit. Um, I will say that his body was sitting in that fucking blue suit. That nigga looks so much better with his hair short. Scrap, if you're watching this from jail, which I doubt that you are, when you get out in five years, nigga, don't put that old Wolverine-ass hair back in your head. Don't grow your hair back out. Leave your hair short. You can halfway get it with your hair. That nigga body is off the chain. I saw that bulge sitting in the the, 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 the seat of them jeans. and I mean, them pants, them slacks, honey. And that boy, he just built like a little young bull, like a little old boxer. Yes, God. I was fucking with the lights on with his hair short. So Stevie J is walking around Mimi house looking like Ving Rhames and Baby Boy. And I was disgusted. Like, ugh. Any nigga that walk around with a do-rag on his head, feet stink. Like, you cannot tell me the nigga feet don't stink and he ain't got, like, foot fungus. Like, ugh. So Mimi and me want him to put that shit up. He's trying to flirt with her heavily. He's still saying that he ain't got no more kids. She don't believe him, so she said they're going to go visit this promise, promise be made chick. So Mama D goes see Betty Idol while she rehearses. And Mama D is dressed like she's fresh off the ranch. I don't know where the fuck she was going with them cowboy boots on and that motherfucking sweater vest. And then she got on that curl Brady ass wig. Like, she just looked a mess. So she thinks that Betty Idol is so pretty and so beautiful and that Betty and Scrappy should be together. Betty is a cute girl. It's her voice and her attitude that makes her so ugly. So Betty says that uh, she and Scrappy no longer talk because of the BAM. And of course, Mama D feels some type of way about this because she thought she got rid of the dirt. <laughs> and she thought she got the BAM out of her fucking palace. 
So Betty says she's over Scrappy because of his rant on transgender people that he put up on Instagram. And so in the video, he says that men who wear wigs, that basically transgenders are transgender people are nothing but men that wear wigs. Um, and Mama D says she's going to get on him and talk to him. So Mimi, Stevie, uh, are on this road trip, and she brings a paternity test. And he says uh, that Jocelyn and him ain't vibing no more and that she's been disloyal. They go visit Promise Be May. Promise Be May come to the door look like grilling a miss, my nigga. Like, <laughs> that bitch look like that bird from the Revenant. I keep on going back to that. That is a big bitch. So she, they knock on her door talking about some excuse me. I know, you know, this is, might be weird, but we wanted to talk to you. But mind you, this bitch is dressed from head to toe in five inch heels, hard done, beat done. Uh, it's quite obvious that she knew you all were coming and that she knew she was about to be filmed for television. Come on, people. So, as soon as they sit down, this bitch starts sweating like a hoe in church. She's sweating like Whitney Houston after a minute of performing. I was like, God damn, bitch, are you that nervous? Are you that fat? If you that fat, were you sweating like that, bitch, and you need to figure out your fucking meal plans and your life. <laughs> like, because that was just ridiculous. So... As she's sitting, I'm just noticing that her heels is leaning as she's sitting down. I'm like, God damn, bitch, you's a big bitch that your heels is leaning to the side, bitch, and you ain't even standing up. Like, you was just misrepresenting us big girls. Like, girl, no. So, um, she says that there is no baby, and she don't even know Stevie J, and that she did it to get Stevie J attention because she feels like she is a star, and she's never talked to Jocelyn, and that she wants to be famous. And that everybody gets on now by doing bullshit, which is true. I mean, people like me with talent <laughs> seem to have to go the long route. But people like, like she said, like Kim K that fucked on her back to get to where she is now. And Mimi who had to fucking hang off the shower rods to keep her little momentum going. They all get it popping. So Mimi gets, uh, you know, mad by her um, choice words about the you know what um promise we may have to say about her she get mad i'm like well Mimi, you can't get mad about what she's saying about you she what she's saying is true but you'll do anything to stay relevant and stay famous so scrappy meets with mama d and this two little ass outfit and his steph curry orthopedic sneakers i don't know where the nigga was going he just looked terrible mama d brings up the video he says that what he was talking about was about transgender people who have um People believe that they were born females, and he just feels like he needs to do background checks, especially living in Atlanta, um, you know, about the people that he's fucking with or whatever, which I understand what he was talking about, because you do have a lot of transgender uh, women who you know, will date a man and won't say anything, and that's that's not how, then you can't do that to somebody, you don't wind up getting killed doing it to somebody, and you have to be honest about who you are, and be comfortable with who you are, and don't blindly lead someone into a relationship, now what I did not uh, agree with, as far as Scrappy is, is, is concerned, is that um, he just sounded uh, very homophobic, telling Mama D to hang around her people, if that's what she want to do, you can hang around them if you want to, I don't. I just didn't like the them and the day the way he was saying it because the way he was saying it is just like how a racist white person would talk about black people. You can hang around them if you want to. You can hang around. It just didn't sound right. It didn't come across right. I did not like it. And he needs to deal with whatever kind of homophobic issues that he might have that he doesn't even realize that he has. He just needs to become educated and not be so fucking stupid. So Mama D asked him to meet up with Betty Allen so they can clear up things. So Jocelyn is at her. Um, office and she looks fab i love her with them finger waves so she's uh saying how she's saying how she's been waiting for mimi to go run to cbj about the baby news because she knew that's what mimi was gonna do so don comes to visit her and jocelyn tells her about how she told mimi about these kids that cbj supposedly had on her but we come to find out that jocelyn ass was lying the whole fucking time she only did it to get back at cbj and to make mimi so mad that he would put her that she would put him on fucking child support and he was like bitch Basically, Jocelyn was on some bitch shit like, bitch, if you gonna fuck with me, I'm gonna fuck with you ten times harder, and I'm gonna have your baby mama go out, go after your pockets. 
the logic was kind of dumb because if y'all was supposed to be quote unquote married for real, then if he ain't got no money, like you say he ain't got no money, then the money would be coming out of your pocket, dingy. So it was funny to me because Jocelyn's just so petty and so stupid, but I love that bitch. I live for her, honey. So Don tells her that Rick Ross has invited uh, Jocelyn to his birthday party. It'll be a great opportunity to her, for especially press wise. And Jocelyn is just reveling in this news. She's like, I cannot wait, honey, because I know Stevie is going to be jealous of me. I know he's going to be mad. So Scrappy's performing in his nursing shoes and he invites Betty Idol and she comes with D. Smith and Betty looks really cute in this and I have to give it to her. I loved her bun and her little polka dot outfit. Loved her little baby hairs. It was all cute until she had the motherfucking contacts in her eyes and I just, I, she lost me there. So D. Smith asks um, Scrappy, why would he talk about needing a woman's baby pictures when he dates them? And, you know, he gives her his reason why. And D. Smith says, well, you know, it's a lot of men out here that decide to uh, sleep with transgender women anyway. And they don't really give a fuck. And he was like, well, you know, uh, there are men like that that, you know, do like sleeping with trans women. But then, like, pretend like that ain't what they do on some down low shit. So they both had valid points. <sighs> Rashida meets with Mimi. She want to know why Mimi's let Stevie stay on her couch and, um... Mimi tells Rashida about Jocelyn Lyon, and Mimi uh, basically looks stupid once again. I was just like, girl, instead of worrying about Jocelyn and CBJ, you need to be worried about them hard-ass titties you got up in your chest. It's obvious she wouldn't got her titties redone again. This is her second implants, and they just look terrible. I don't know if the motherfuckers hadn't settled yet, but they just looked hard and like she was about to suffocate. Like, oh my God, they were terrible looking. God, get them together. So Mimi says that she's done with uh, Stevie and Jocelyn's shit. She's not going to be in their business no more. And then Rashida shows Mimi a picture of Jocelyn at Rick Ross' birthday party. And Rick Ross is standing behind Jocelyn. He had his arm wrapped around her. And his hand is like resting on her thigh. And Mimi like, oh, I can't wait. I wanted to Stevie know about this. Bitch, you just said five minutes ago you was going to stay out their business. So your ass ain't learned shit. So to clear everything up with that, Mimi, I mean, Jocelyn and Rick Ross is not fucking around. At that birthday party, he had two of his hoes there in the same one fucking dress, and they was not fucking Jocelyn. So, Stevie J goes on the radio, and he plans on getting Jocelyn back for all the shit that she's been up to, and he has a new business partner named Miss Jackson. Um, so, Jay Nix is on the radio, and he brings up the picture of Jocelyn and Rick Ross, and Stevie says that no wife of his would be out here acting like that, and so he's asked also, are him and Jocelyn together? He says no, and that they were never married, which we all the fuck knew anyway. So that radio interview led up to what's happening now with the whole polygraph test and everything that's going on with him and fucking Jocelyn. <sighs> I'm tired. So that was my review tonight of Love and Hip Hop. Sorry it wasn't as funny, but this episode really didn't give me that much life. Um, I will be back next week, like I said, with new reviews. And I'll be pretty again next week. I cannot wait, y'all, because up underneath this scarf, it is beady bead country. Uh, <laughs> let me get back to work on this damn book, y'all. If you did not watch Game of Thrones last night, get your whole entire life last night's, last night's episode of Game of Thrones, Battle of the Bastards. I watched it three times. I'm about to watch it again with my son. It was so fucking lit. Oh my god, John So, Sansa, Daenerys. Oh, little finger came through, bitch. Okay, another Game of Thrones tea. I love you all so much. Have a great, phenomenal week. And be safe. Be positive. Be joyous. And yeah, be encouraged. Love you all. Bye.